Hey guys, today I'm going to be going over how I use my iPad as a structural engineer. A lot of you guys have seen me using my iPad in other videos and have been interested to learn more. So in this video, I thought I'd give you a complete overview and walk you through some of the individual ways I've been using my iPad for work. Also, if you're new here, my name is Ben and I'm a structural engineer working and living on the east coast of Australia. And if you find value in this video, please do give it a like and consider subscribing. All right, so first up, I have a third generation 256 gigabyte 11 inch iPad Pro. I went for the space gray color and the Wi-Fi only model. In 2022, when I bought this iPad, I paid 1,279 Australian dollars, which at the time was about 870 US dollars and about 730 British pounds. The case I use on my iPad is called the ESR hybrid case. And the best thing about it is how many different ways it can be used. If you're writing notes, you can fold the case back so that it's on a slight angle. Or if you like writing when the screen is completely flat, you can do that too. If you're wanting to use the iPad more as a desktop screen you can sit it upright at two different angles and you can also fold the case back if you want to have that extra space in front of you now because this case actually comes in two separate pieces everything i just mentioned you can do in the horizontal position you can also do in the vertical position too i haven't seen this capability on a lot of other cases because unlike most cases they don't have the right magnet configuration and strength to support this setup so it's quite unique one final thing that I like about this case is that it's got a latch around the Apple Pencil. This latch just allows me to know that my pencil is locked into position and that I'm not going to accidentally bump it off and lose it. This case sells for 50 Australian dollars on Amazon and I'll leave a link to it in the description. Now as for the pen, I do use the official Apple Pencil and while it is pricey compared to some of the cheaper alternatives like the Logitech Crayon, the convenience of having your pen charged by just attaching it to the side of your iPad was something that I couldn't pass up. It's important to note that with a lot of these cheaper alternatives, you do usually have to plug the pen in and charge them like any other device. Although from the reviews that I've watched, the writing experience seems to be much the same with these cheaper alternatives, so it's mainly just these luxury features that you miss out on like charging the pen on the side of your iPad and double tapping on the pen to change the feature that you're using. Alright, now moving away from the logistics, let's go through each of my use cases. So the first way I use my iPad for work is to make project notebooks. Basically for every single project that I work on, I'll make a new notebook and anything related to that project will go into that notebook. So this could be things like calculations, meeting notes, key project deadlines, or even just design assumptions. As an engineer at a smaller size company, it is pretty typical for me to be pushing out new projects every couple of weeks or sometimes even weekly. And due to this high turnover, it is hard for me to remember specifics about every single project. So by having everything all together in one central place, it allows me to refer back to it very easily if I ever need to. Also, to make these project notebooks, I've been using an app called Notability, and for anyone out there looking for good note-taking apps on the iPad, the other two that I would recommend is GoodNotes and OneNote. Okay, so the next way I use my iPad is to do hand calculations. And yes, even after you graduate, there is still going to be some tasks that require you to do hand calculations. But in my opinion, sometimes doing hand calculations can be a lot faster than trying to make a model in some software or even creating a spreadsheet. Now, most of the time, the company that you're going to work for will already have a PDF calculation template that everyone uses to write their calculations on. And if that's the case, that's great. You can just import that straight into your note-taking app of choice and start writing your calculations. But on the other hand, if everyone kind of just does their own thing, you will need to either A, create your own, or B, just use one of the templates within the note-taking app you choose to use. Personally, I use one of the templates within Notability and don't do anything special, but it's completely up to you. Either way, it's really easy to export your calculations as a PDF when you're done and send them back to your work computer. Also, while I'm on the topic of calculations, I do want to mention the calculator app that I use on the iPad, and the one I use is called NCalcFX. This calculator app is free and and it really is just as good as any physical scientific calculator. Hey everyone, I hope that you're enjoying the video, but I wanted to quickly interrupt to tell you about a friend of the channel and the sponsor of today's video, SkySiv. For those of you that haven't heard of SkySiv, it's a cloud-based structural engineering design and analysis software that 
runs completely from your web browser. This means that you don't need to do any software updates or download any apps to get started, and you can instantly access SkySiv on any device by simply logging into your account. Within SkySiv, there are several design and analysis modules that can help you with the design of individual members and their connections, and it also has a 3D FEA frame builder that allows you to model entire steel frames as well as concrete structures. In addition to these features, SkySiv also recently added a new quick design library. In the quick design library, there are heaps of optimized design and analysis modules that have been tailored to different codes. Each model in this library offers a concise and clean way to carry out design checks and has a strong focus on ease of use and speed of output. Personally, I think this library is super useful for doing quick checks throughout the day and can be really handy for learning new design procedures. I also really like that even though these modules are condensed, you still have the option to go deep into the calculations like in SkySiv's usual modules. In terms of pricing, SkySiv offers a range of different plans both in month to month and contract formats and they also offer heavily discounted plans for students. Also, if you're solely interested in the quick design library, you can get a standalone subscription to that too. So if you're interested in giving SkySiv a go or you want to learn more, be sure to check them out using my link in the description where you'll be helping to support the channel and you can also access an extended 30 day free trial. Thanks again to SkySiv for sponsoring this video and let's get back to it. Okay, so the next way I use my iPad is for meetings. Often there's times where you need to sit down with other engineers, an architect or a builder and work out how a project is all going to come together. Using my iPad in these meetings allows me to quickly write down notes while at the same time having up any drawings we're talking about up on my screen. Now you could argue that if you just printed out the drawings and brought a notebook in your laptop you could achieve exactly the same thing but that's just a lot more effort and way less portable as opposed to just grabbing an iPad. And when you've got a lot of different meetings happening all over the place, that just means you've got to do a lot more preparation. Also, another thing that's really handy about having an iPad during an online meeting is that if you ever have to turn your camera on, you know that your camera quality is going to be way higher than just using your work computer and also the microphone is likely a lot better too. All right, and the next way I use my iPad is for site inspections. Honestly, having an iPad during a site inspection is super handy and there's a few main benefits that I want to cover. Number one is that by having an iPad I don't have to muck around printing off any drawings. Since getting an iPad all I need to do is literally send myself the drawings and then I'm ready to walk out the door. Number two is that I can very easily and neatly write notes all over the drawings. By using an iPad I have access to a bunch of different colors and highlighters all from my Apple Pencil and when I'm trying to move around site fast and check everything off, this is a super easy way to keep everything neat. Number three is drawing navigation. Compared to holding A3 pieces of paper and trying to flick between pages as you're moving around site, holding an iPad and just being able to scroll between pages and even using the split screen feature is just way easier. And number four is that you can take photos and draw straight on top of these images. Being able to do this allows me to fully complete site inspection reports while I'm on site because in the past, whenever I saw something that was wrong and I needed to take a photo of it, I would then have to go back to the office, transfer that photo onto my computer and do the markup on top of the photo. But now that I can draw straight on top of these photos on site, I'm saving myself a lot of time. All right, and another thing I do on my iPad is access my university notes. As some of you might already be aware, at the end of my first year of university, I started taking digital notes. So anything past this point, I have stored in OneNote. These days, I only really look back at these notes occasionally, but I do really appreciate knowing that I have quick access to them no matter where I am, and that they're safely backed up and that I've got no chance of losing them. All right, and the last thing that I've been using my iPad for is to create study notes and to store worked examples. In Notability, I actually created a whole new folder for all things like this, and I regularly find myself coming back to it to remind myself of different design procedures and also how to use different design programs. Personally, I find being able to refer back to this sort of stuff really useful as seeing my own handwriting gives me the confidence that I can do it again. And I also find this sort of stuff to be a really big time saver as it allows you to not learn things again from scratch. Anyways, I hope that you learned something from this video and if you did enjoy it, you might like either of these two day in the life videos here where you'll see me putting my iPad to use. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.